uh, we'll start the class. Good evening, everyone. Uh, let me just start sharing my screen. Cool. I hope you guys can see my screen now. So yeah, yeah. Yesterday we've covered most of the uh, uh, the callback methods. We have just one callback method left. Okay, uh, but we'll discuss about that on Monday. And of course, today we have some other important topics to discuss about. Okay, so let's get started with that. Go <clears throat> live, and uh, and then guys, I'll finish off the class at 10:30 today, so we'll not take a break. I will uh, we'll go continuously till 10:30, and we'll stop it at 10:30. Or 10:20 exactly, and also I'm planning key from next Friday. We uh, we will mostly have the class uh, much earlier than this. Uh, so probably at around uh, maybe 6:37 we'll start the class. Uh, uh, only on Fridays. Only on Fridays. Next uh, next Friday, say we'll have the class at around uh, <clears throat> 6:30 or 7. Because the thing is that 10:20, 10:30 I have some work on every Friday, so I have to get that done. Isliye. So I hope you guys will be okay with that. Um, Okay, so yeah, let's get started again. So yesterday, I hope you guys have uh, have revised whatever I spoke in the last few classes with respect to uh, the array callback methods because again, like I said, they're very important. Uh, now, one thing that I've left out um, while teaching about <clears throat> the if statements and all of that is about the about the switch statements. Now, the switch statement is again extremely common. It's part of many programming languages. Let's go through that quickly today. So what I'll do is, I'll first of all open up the console. All right. So let's say that we have a condition like this. Uh, so if let's say that if uh, rate is or let's say if score is equal to um, 95, let's say, and what I'll do is if the score simply equal to uh, let's say Score triple equal to 90. Then I want to like I want to uh, maybe do a console log of pretty good, or else if the score is equal to 80, <clears throat> then I want to do a console log of not bad, or else if the score is equal to 70. I'll do a console log of bad. Or I'll just add one else statement, which simply says console log is uh, not determined, let's say. OK, we have like this. Now, uh, when you have something going on like this, we can simply switch to a, uh, a switch statement. So a switch statement is you should simplify something like this. OK, so what we can do is, We'll say switch. <clears throat> Within this, you want to check for what? I want to check for the score variable. Okay. Now, within the switch statement, there are multiple cases, and every case will basically match with uh, match with the value that is present inside the score variable. Okay. So I'm saying that I want to look for the score variable. I want to listen to the. I mean, I want uh, uh, the basic variable here is a score variable. Now. Does the score variable match the score of 90? In that case, I want to do a console log of pretty good. Like this. Okay. Or let's say, does the score match the case of 80? Then do a console log of not bad. Or does it match a score of 70? Do a console log of bad. Or does it match the score of uh, yeah? We have these three cases right now. I'll hit save. So I'll simply let's remove this. Okay. Right now, what is happening is we're checking for score. I'm saying if is score equal to 90, it's not, so we'll not print this. Is score equal to 80? It's not, so we don't print this. Is score equal to 70? It's not, so we don't print this also. Because the score does not equal any of these cases, uh, we end up printing nothing. But if we want to add an else statement, okay, like in case the score doesn't meet any of these cases, what should we do in that case? 
that a default case. So we have a, this thing called as default. Like this, default we can simply say not determined. What the default case simply does is if none of these cases are matching, then we go to the default case. Okay, just like how if none of these are matching, we go to the else uh, else statement. We go to the default case if none of these are actually matching. Okay, that is what the default case is all about. Again, it's very simple. So we have a score ka variable. By checking, uh, does a score variable equal ninety? Does a score variable equal eighty or seventy or what? Okay. But let's say um, that this time. Uh, okay. If I change this to 90, this time, let's see what we get. Okay, so what's happening this time is we're checking <clears throat> checking for score of 90. So this has met. <clears throat> we print this out. But what happens is because this has met, right? Everything below it will also meet by default. Because the way switch works is it it thinks that agar ye case match ho gaya, then I'm sure that everything else also will match. That's what it thinks by default. But that is not uh, what our case is, right? Our case is actually not that. So we want only this to print. If this meets the condition, only this should print. We should not even look at anything else. If that is what, what we want, then we need to add a break statement like this. OK? What the break statement does is they're saying if this case is matched, we simply console log the statement and we break out of this entire switch condition. We don't even look any further. Okay. What if I change this to 80 right now? Again, what happens is once we match a certain case, once we match a certain case here, every case below it will also match by default. Okay, so if you if you take a look at the diagram, <clears throat> let's say that we have one case here. What is wrong? Yeah. Let's say we have one, uh, one, two, three, and uh, we have four cases. Let's say like this. Okay. Uh, case one, case two, case three, and case four. Let's say. Basically, if this case is matched now, if this case is matched, by default, we match every other case also. That's what the switch statement does. Once everything, uh, once anything at the top is matched, we also match everything below it. Because that's what it, uh, this thing is. It's saying that, okay, if this case is matching, then everything below it also will probably match. Okay. But if you don't want this behavior, then what you should do is, once you add this thing, you add a break statement here. A break statement here, a break statement here, like this. OK? So if you break, what happens is, if you match this statement, then only this statement will run. None of these will run. Or if you match only this statement, only this will run. If you match only this, only this will run. But if you don't have the breaks, don't have breaks anywhere, then what will happen is, let's say that we match this case. Then we match this case also. We match this case as well. So once you match a top level case, everything below it will also match by default. Okay? If that is not what you want, at the break statement. Okay? That's how the switch statement works. So let's again add a break here. A break here. Now it will work like expected. So if a value of 70 will only give us bad, and value of 90 will only give us pretty, pretty good, and value of 80 will give us not bad. That's it. So we basically check if the score is equal to 80. 
ठीक है द स्विच स्टेटमेंट इज अगेन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज विल बी यूजिंग दिस अलॉट इन रिएक्ट ओके स्पेशली देर इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रेड्यूसर एंड रेडक्ट नॉल ऑफ दैट तो वहां पर स्विच स्टेटमेंट इज वेरी यूजफुल okay <clears throat> but i'll tell you uh, that most of the times where you have this uh, <clears throat> you have a switch statement there are actually better ways to solve the same problem <clears throat> it's called as mapping so let me show you something <clears throat> let's say that you have a function um get related value or whatever and this takes um a key now basically we are saying we'll do a switch statement <clears throat> if the key is equal to uh let's say like marvel i mean let's say iron man i know one more thing guys so when uh, with respect to switch right we can even use a return keyword here so we are we are saying if the case is iron man if the key is iron man we can simply return uh i have a file let's say high rating basically or if the case is captain america and we can return a rating of 3.5 let's say and similarly let's add one more rating for for be 4.5 and we'll add a default case I'll not add a default case. I'll just add file man. This will be file. Let's say <clears throat> what does this mean? So if I do if I do a const result is equal to if I give a get related key and if I give it a give it a key of iron man guys. So what will the result contain this time? contains 5 because what is happening here is i'm calling the function and i'm passing in the string right here so this get related value function will get this key which is the iron man key okay gets the iron man key here so i'm saying switch of this key i'm checking okay so is the case iron man so is this key iron man yes it is we simply return 5 from it <clears throat> now remember within a function once you return something you don't go any further right you simply just exit the function you return this value and hence if i console log my result here i'll simply get my result like this okay now similarly if i add like captain america here let's see what happens so i'm calling this function i'm passing this argument which means this key right now is this captain america now i'm checking okay so i want to check for this uh, for this key here with my switch statement i'm checking so is this key iron man it's not we simply we skip this part okay then uh, is this key uh, captain america yes it is and hence we return a value of 3.5 if i save this file i get 3.5 here okay guys any questions Guys, can you hear me? Look, any questions? Is it confusing or something? Okay. Okay. So this was about uh, this. Now, next thing is within this one. Instead of using a switch statement here, right? What you could have actually done is use an object. So, I'll create an object here. i'll say key to value mapping so i'm just giving a big name like this because i want to map the key to the particular value so let's say the key uh, the key is uh, is cap is iron man if the key is iron man by the way guys when you're creating when you're creating keys right with an object okay, wait uh, i will talk about this one important thing i'll just comment it out 
let's talk about a, a normal object. A normal object here, when you're creating keys, let's say if you're creating a key of uh, of man, let's say like gender, man, or male, or whatever. Okay. Now here you have a key here. This is the key. This is the value, right? The key is always a string that we already know. But it is possible to not add uh, this. The uh, it's possible not to add the quotes basically around this one. Okay, I mean you can add this, not a problem. Okay, but you don't have to. Okay, so it's not a rule that you must add this thing. Okay, anyway behind the scenes this will be connected to a, a to a string anyway. But I'm saying that it is not it is not required for you to add this, but you can if you want to. But when would you actually need to add the quotes for sure is when you when you want to give a key which contains a space between uh, between the words. Like for example, gender of person. Okay, this is a valid key, and within this key, I'm giving the spaces here. When you have spaces, right? You have to give the double quotes for sure. Otherwise, it won't actually work. <clears throat> okay. If I remove the double quotes now, see it will throw an error. Okay. And hence, whenever you have a key which has uh, like spaces between the words, you must be using double quotes. Remember that. Okay. Now this brings me to the point: okay, How will I access this property now? Like, it is not possible for me to do this. I can't do gender of person. It's not possible. I can't just do uh, this. This will not work. Prakash, yes, you can either use a single quote or double quote. Anything is fine. Okay. As I'm saying, I see this is not possible, guys. Okay. So what should we do now? We know that there is one more way we can access the properties in object, right? What is it? What is the other way? What is the other way we can access the properties within an object? Yeah, we can use the square bracket notation. So, which means I can simply add the gender of person like this. Now this will again work. If I do console dot log, this will work well. Okay, so it's very important to remember how to deal with the key names when you have spaces between the words. The first thing is when you're creating an object, you have to always add uh, this thing. You have to always add double quotes. Without double quotes, you cannot add a key which has spaces between the words. Okay, and second thing is when you are trying to access that key. Which has spaces between the words. You have to use this again. Okay, so keeping this in mind, let's do uh, let's solve this problem now. Yeah, so I can convert this. I'm saying Iron Man will have a rating of five, and Captain America will have a rating of three point five, and uh, Thor. Will have a rating of 4.5. Spider Man will have a rating of 5. Now we have the key to value mapping. Now observe one thing: key, this key, this key, and this key have double quotes, but this thing doesn't have double quotes. Why is that? These keys they need the double quotes because there is space between the words, right? But thought is just a single word here. When we have a single word, we don't need any double quotes or single quotes. Okay. Now we have the object, right? So how can I return the value based on the key right now? Extremely simple. I simply do a key value mapping of a key, and I simply return that, and I get the correct answer again. Okay. So I have the object. 
and i'm saying ki object mein i'm giving a dynamic key this time and guys this has spoke about multiple times right so the whole point of the square bracket is that you can give dynamic keys within it theek hai so why do you have that why can you access the property of an object using uh, square brackets one of the reasons is we can access dynamic keys like this time the key can be anything the key can be whatever you give here right so based on the key we get back this value and we'll simply return in that value here basically uh, this looks uh, <clears throat> far more clean than this theek okay? hai so wherever possible wherever you uh, wherever it's possible to convert a switch statement to a, an object always do this makes sense guys wherever is possible to use an object instead of using a switch statement always use an object okay but there will be times where you cannot use an object in such a case always use a switch statement there but the first preference will go to this one now one important to, to understand here is see here what if we want to add a default case like default case will be return of 1 let's say okay so in this case default case will work fine but what about object abhi object mein there is no default uh, default key right so how do you think we can actually do this can someone guess how can i i want to account for a default case like if the key is not if one of them can't so if else is definitely one way like i'll tell you so basically is saying ki let's say the const uh, is a, a const value is equal to the key to value mapping of key okay now guys if we try to access a property within an object which does not exist if we try to access a key which does not exist in an object what will be the value like my question is uh it will be undefined so there is right so basically let's say that i have an object like this uh, which has only id and city okay if i try to access object uh, object dot location or pet or object dot name i'm trying to access a key which does not exist in the object right in such a case the value will be undefined keeping this in mind okay, let's say that i'm passing some key which does not exist in the object like if i'm trying to pass uh, pass the batman okay this time what will the value be here your right so guys you absolutely right so guys when i pass like batman here what will be the value of this what will the value variable contain it will be undefined correct because this batman ka key does not exist in this object and hence this will result in undefined right get undefined here so we can simply do a check like surya said we can say ki if value exists then return value okay nahi to will simply return one this is one way of adding a default case no problem but there's an even better way actually what i'll say is i'll say if return value or agar va see if value is there then return value and to return one I hit save now. I get back one here. So I'm using a ternary operator, right? Remember, ternary operator is actually an expression, okay? Which means we re, uh, we are returning a value at the end at the end of the day. So I'm checking if the value exists, then return value. Then to return one. Okay. So guys, is this clear, guys? Is this clear? Okay. 
ओके बट सेन इवन शॉर्ट अवे ऑफ डूइंग दिस इज सो से वी कैन यूज द और ऑपरेटर राइट वी कैन से इफ वैल्यू रिटर्न वैल्यू इफ वैल्यू एक्सिस्ट अदरवाइज रिटर्न वन remember what the or operator uh, remember what the or operator actually does is saying if this is truthy then simply return this but if this is falsy then return this right all i'm saying is if this is truthy then return this but if this is falsy then return this that's it so a rating of 1 but if i give the correct uh, name like thor we get back 4.5 it is correct again okay which means i can simply just do this in one line like this okay so this is how we give a default case in this part of the default case we're saying ki i can remember what the or operator does If left side is truthy, it simply returns. But if this is falsy, we return this one. Okay, guys. One simple quiz right now. What is the value of this? I do console dot log of null um, null or false. What is the value of this, guys? What will this expression return? Okay, so I'm getting like mixed answers. Okay, <clears throat> see again. Remember what is the basic uh, syntax I told you. If left side is false, C return right side. As simple as that. Look at the statement and tell me what the answer will be. Ravi, Surya, and Tanzila, do you, uh, do you guys still think it is null? Hmm. See, just read this. It's extremely simple. If the left side is false, C, return right side. No, I'm, see, I'm not saying that right side should be truthy. I'm not. I'm not saying anything about the right side here. I'm not talking about. what type of value is the right side i don't care what the right side is all i care about is what is the left side theek okay? hai so if the left side is false then return right side that is all i'm saying so left side jo hai that is important guys the right side doesn't matter if when i hit hint save this time so i get false because remember left side is important left mein kya hai that is important right side is not important ठीक है नो वन क्वेश्चन अगेन व्हाट इफ आई से फॉल्स लेट्स से ट्रू एंड फॉल्स ओके व्हाट अबाउट दिस आंसर फॉर दिस गाइस लेट मी टेल अस ऑन द सिंटैक्स फॉर दिस सो इफ लेफ्ट साइड इज ट्रू थी रिटर्न राइट साइड बट इफ लेफ्ट साइड इज फॉल्स थी Return left side. Look at the statement. See, do I uh, do I even care what is what is on the right side? Do I even care what is on the right side, guys? No. Which means when it comes to either double, uh, I mean the or operator or the and operator. Okay, so. both the or and the and operator both of these they don't care what type of value is at the right side right side kuch bhi ho sakta hai right side can be false it doesn't matter but left side is all that matters let me just write this point down because uh, i like the way it is explained or and and only care about the left side what happens guys is lot of times when i teach stuff right i realize that i've i've told something really nice to remember so i decided to make a note of such things going forward because you won't believe me like while teaching right lot of times i realized that okay like this how it actually works right 
so it hits me a lot of times that okay like this is the right way of teaching or whatever so like during teaching i also learn certain things new so i want to make note of that theek hai ha so this part just remember with uh, with or and and they don't care what is on the right side they only care about the left side part left side pe dekho wo kya hai dekho bas depending on that you decide what to return okay one last thing what if i do a uh, false or true what will this return guys again you're wrong see let me write this down and i want you guys to write it down here okay so what the or operator shit what the or operator does is if left side is falsy return right side if left side is truthy return left side the way you can uh, think about this is see this or operator is a nice guy okay agar left side pe false to kya hua right side pe true ho sakta hai na there is a chance that right side can be truthy so it keeps on checking it goes till the end basically it's a good guy because it's a good guy is okay if left side is falsy he goes to the next part hoping that right side might be truthy but doesn't matter what is the right side like jo bhi right side pe wo return hoga if left side is false remember but if left side is truthy he's happy अगर उसको एक ट्रूथ वैल्यू मिल गया लेफ्ट साइड पे हिज हैप्पी विद दैट हिल सिंपली रिटर्न द ट्रूथ वैल्यू एंड तंजिल इज सेइंग दैट द और ऑपरेटर रिटर्न्स द वैल्यू ऑफ इट्स फर्स्ट ऑपरेंड इफ इट्स ट्रूथी फॉल्स और ट्रू द फर्स्ट ऑपरेंड फॉल्स इज फॉल्सी सो द ऑपरेटर वैल्यू इज सेकंड ऑपरेंड ट्रू एंड रिटर्न्स देयरफॉर ऑल ऑफ द ट्रू एक्सप्रेशन इज ट्रू दैट्स एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट तंजिल ओके Okay, so this is what I want to uh, talk about, guys. Okay, so is this absolutely clear this time? Write it down here. What's up? Now talking about the AND operator. So AND is actually a strict guy. What is saying is, if left side is false, he return left side. Don't even check what right side is. Okay. It doesn't care. Like right side, it's true. Hai, but it doesn't care. Usko ek false mil gaya, so it's return left side. But if left side is truthy, then return right side. That's it. Yeah, but which cases? So we have this case here. We're saying that left side is falsy, and hence return left side. If left side is truthy. Return right side. That's it. Okay, so this is what I want to talk about. Uh, the other thing, guys, is another one small thing which I forgot to mention before was regarding the equal to uh, the assignment operator. Uh, just like how we have the plus, the minus, and uh, division, or into, or modulo. Okay, we have all these operators, right? Mathematical operators, mathematical operator. We have these operators, right? Now, one of the operators is actually the equal to operator. It is the assignment operator. Okay, what is special about this? Is see, first of all, when we use any of these operators, right? They always they always result in a value, which means all of these are part of expressions, right? Like if you do two plus two, is this an expression? Yes, it is, right? Ha, huh, good. So, uh, similarly, if you think about it, actually, equal to is also an expression. But although I don't expect you to use it, like in, because I haven't used it yet, but it's good to know. But it's good to know that this is actually an expression. I'll tell you why. So let's say that we have something like. This constant is equal to ten. Uh, 
or let's say let b on c is equal to um, n plus b is equal to a plus 5. Now, I know this looks very confusing, but let's break it down, OK? See, we always start with parentheses anyway, OK? Let's start with parentheses. So within the parentheses, guys, what is happening? Let's just look at this part. We have this part here. Now, what is the value of a? a is 10. So b becomes 10 plus 5. And b, uh, b becomes 15, right? Basically, we have b is equal to 15 here. OK? But what is happening when I'm saying b is equal to 15, this equal to or the assignment operator will assign a value of 15 to b, which means b will become 15. But at the same time, after assigning it, the equal to actually returns whatever value it is assigned. OK, which means the, uh, the assignment operator will first assign and it also returns the value that's been assigned. This part is really weird to know. I'm not sure why the hell does it, but, but it, it does do it. And uh, see, most of the times you're not even be using it. This fact ko, hai? which means like this part right now, this part will be replaced by what guys? See, what will this part be replaced with? So I'm saying ki, the assignment operator will first assign this value to B and then returns that value, which means this part will be replaced by 15. Okay? Which means we ultimately end up with this. Okay, let's see what the answer is. At 25. Okay? Because this part, the equal to part, actually returned as that uh, returned as that value. Okay. In fact, let me check one thing. Even I am not sure this works, but let's see. Let a is equal to 10. Okay, I don't think this will work, but let's say let a do console dot log a is equal to 10. See, we get 10 here. Because this a is equal to 10 itself returned a value. Tell you even the, the weird thing. So cons b is equal to a is equal to uh, a is equal to 10. What is happening here is this part is the assignment operator, right? Uh, the equal to here is assigning a value of 10 to a, but after assigning it, it also returns that value, which means this will be replaced by whatever has been assigned. And hence, the value of b will now be 10, which we got right here. OK? Again, I don't expect you to know this that well, because a lot of people actually don't know this, and you don't need to also. Because you'll never do something like this. In fact, this code is pretty uh, weird and difficult to understand. So I would, in fact, I would say never use this. But it's just good to know. <clears throat> That's it. Now, one more, uh, one more important thing about operators is let's say that you have a number like this. Okay. If you want to change the sign of the number, if you want to change the positive to negative and negative to positive, you can simply do cons num is equal to minus of that number. A minus operator, when used on the number here, it converts that number to the opposite sign, which means if it is a positive number, the change is to negative. If it is negative, change is to positive. So if I do a console.log of new number, I get back minus 100. But if it is already minus 200, let's say, OK, guys, what do you think the answer will be now? It will be 200 because we are converting the negative to a positive value.
Yes, so it's simple math, correct. Okay. And now one thing, uh, one important thing here is when you have two operands, like uh, let's say sum is equal to 10 plus 20. Okay, see, and now this plus is an operator, equal to is an operator, and these both are called as operands. Okay, so operands. So operands ka matlab hai ki you have two numbers, and these two numbers are being operated by the plus operator. So plus is the operator here, and these both are the operands. Okay. But it is possible that you can use a single operand as well. <clears throat> you already seen that. For example, if you do that negative number is equal to, if you take a uh, positive is equal to 100, if you do a minus of positive number, okay? We're using a single operand here, right? We have only one operand and we have one operator. Now this kind of operator, when it operates on a single operand, it's called a unary operator. Unary operator. Now, unary ka matlab kya hai? One. So the uh, the English definition of unary is one. Okay. So it simply it simply means that we are operating on a single operand. So when we, when we have a single operand, it's called as a unary operator. Okay. It's uh, minus m does it. So by the way, when you have Let's say a plus, it's possible to use a plus also, but honestly, plus doesn't do anything in this case. Okay. So if it's already a number, it doesn't do anything. If I do a console.log of negative number, it's still negative only. Doesn't do anything. Okay. Okay. One other thing about this is, what if you have a string? Like, let's say if you have a num number in string. I have a number instead of string here. Okay. One way to convert this number, I'm mean, just uh, the string into a number is basically doing like number of number in string. This is one way of converting this to a number like this. Okay. This is called a constructor function, which we'll learn about a little bit later, but it's simply a function if you see. So it's a number, it's a function which accepts uh, which accepts any other string as, as an argument. Okay, so this converts this string to the number format, right? And we, in fact, we learned about one more method, if you guys remember, and one more function, it is called a sparse int, right? This also converts this thing into a number. But there is one more very short way of converting a string to a number if it's all if it's really a number, and that is using a plus. Here. Use a plus now. See, it converts that thing to a number. If I add this like uh, uh 298.67. See, that also gets into a number again. So the plus operator can be used for this also. Guys, now we have seen that the plus operator is used for multiple things. Like the plus operator, jo hai, plus, but okay. Huh. So first of all, so concatenation is used for addition, also used for converting to number so it can be used for these three things basically so just remember this okay really depends on what you can do with it so you can either add two numbers you can concat two strings or it can or something to a number we can do multiple things with the same operator called as a plus operator okay Okay, cool. Oh, hmm. What do we have next? Hmm. Yes, hold on.
Okay. Guys, we'll take a quick, like a five minute break. Of, I'll just prepare my notes for, I mean, I'll just get my notes for DOM till then, because the next topic is a pretty big one, which is all about JavaScript DOM manipulation. Minus also converts string to number, like minus 221, then we'll become number. With the plus thing, I'm not sure. Actually, let me check. Uh, other 298.6, what does it do? Okay, yeah, so it looks like it converts it into a negative number. Yeah, so so minus also converts the string to number, but does by negative by default. Let's check one thing. I am curious to know this. What if we do something like this? Oh yeah, so we're doing something like this. Cool. So even I also didn't know this honestly. Because you know, honestly, like things like this you'll never end up using in real projects. Okay. So it's it's good to know, but it really won't help you, you know, with much. Okay, anyway, so it's 9.53. I'll see you guys at uh, 9.58, okay? Just a five minutes break. I'm going to go to the next one. 
I guess I'm back. Let's uh, continue. Friend. Yeah. So again, the next big, big, very big topic. The last uh, one of the last big topics is DOM. Okay. So again, DOM. Ke baar, before getting in DOM, I'll tell you what we have done so far. So so far, we learned HTML, CSS, right? We know how to create a website using HTML. We know how to add styles to a website using uh, using CSS. And we have only learned. Uh, JavaScript on its own. Okay, we have learned how to use JavaScript ka basic syntax to create some variables, write some functions, or all, all of that. But we have still not integrated or started using JavaScript along with HTML and CSS. Right? We have not learned how to use JavaScript to basically maybe change the styles or maybe to add some text. Okay, let's say that uh, if I have a button on my page right now. Let's say that I have a button. Uh, this is my page, okay, and I have a button called as uh, greet, okay. When I click on this button called greet, when I click on this, I want to display a message here saying hello, how are you, like this, okay. So far, using just HTML and CSS, it's not possible to do this, right? But now using JavaScript. And we're learning a few, uh, learning a bunch of functions right now. We can do something like this. we can add interactivity to any website. Okay, let's say that your website has only HTML and CSS for now. It's it's simply a website. Okay, but when you start adding JavaScript onto your website, it becomes a web app because now your website can start behaving like an app wherein it can listen to user input, uh, can listen to user action. It can perform a lot of things that you wanted to perform. So by adding interactivity using JavaScript, you make the pages very dynamic. Okay, and trust me, like JavaScript uh, is basically extremely popular. Uh, like there is not even a single web app which doesn't use JavaScript. For example, even if you take a simple example like this, I I showed you this earlier also. Let's say like Rithik Roshan, you type something here. If you go further down, you will get uh, this thing right here, okay, like this thing. When I click on this, I want it to expand. When I click on it again, I want to collapse. And same thing with this also, okay. Also observe that. See, when I click on this God of Actor, see, we get more stuff added to the bottom. So all of the interactivity, all of these uh, dynamic elements on the page, they are being created and they are being distorted. They have been modified by JavaScript only. 
okay one more example as i told you before also like netflix if you go uh, simple you are checking ki uh, uh, is the person logged in or not if the person is logged in then show this ui the person is not logged in show some other ui okay so stuff like that you need javascript to do it okay but we have to understand one very important uh, 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 concept and it's called as a document object model what am i doing hold on document object model what this basically means like this or people called as dom also right in bracket what dom basically does is what document will be uh, that's the c it's basically a bunch of javascript objects okay a dom is nothing but it's a collection of javascript objects okay now we know what objects are right we already worked with objects a lot we know that objects have multiple properties and every property is basically a key value pair okay so basically a dom is nothing but a collection of objects but what kind of objects okay basically see whenever you have a website like if you go to apple.com we have a website like this okay the entire website there is a document object model uh, available which represents this website okay like uh, to give a simple uh, even simple example right let's say that we have a, a, just a simple page like let's say that index or html ke andar i have only uh, i have only these things i don't even have like title and i have i have only these things i don't have script tag let's say i have only these things right now okay what is a dom is see <clears throat> when the web uh, when the browser comes across this entire thing that html it starts to create a tree like structure now you guys already know what a tree is right you you already worked with dsa so you guys know what a tree is so you know get to uh, so a tree basically has a parent and children the children can have for the children right basically a tree structure ka matlab hai see it looks like a tree like an actual tree let's say you have a parent node which has like couple of children node okay again this child can have uh, three more children like this so that is what basically a, a tree structure is so a tree can have like one leaf again there's one more branch one more branch and so on and so forth so basically if you see like a tree structure it looks something like this theek hai but always remember that at the very top you'll have one single one single node we call it as a node basically tree node theek hai so coming back to this so basically what i'm trying to say is when you have a page like this the browser converts this thing into what we call as a dom uh, a dom structure a tree structure what it does is it creates a node for every single element on this page okay what is the first node we have a first node here html so it creates a html node like this okay. this html node contains what contains the head here contains the body right so it contains these two things the head and this is the body so there are two nodes here okay what is the head contain the head contains one thing called title so we'll have a title here like this what does the body contain the body contains one h1 so we'll have a h1 like this browser will look at the html page like this 
it converts this thing into a bunch of nodes like this it contains can it creates a topmost called html and then head and then body can the h1 head can the title now it's very clear on what the relationship is between every single element right you can clearly see that this title is inside the head element title ka parent is head element or head ka parent is html or head and body are the siblings because they both have a common parent okay because head and body are siblings because they have common parent and h1 is a child of the body element okay so basically the browser creates a dom structure a tree structure like this okay this is a tree structure but the the reason we called as a tree structure is i mean the reason this tree structure is called as a dom is every single element here is basically a simple javascript object okay which means this is an object this is an object this this and this so every single element every single node which is present inside that tree structure here is actually an object that's the way we call it the document object model okay but one important to remember here is see at the very top level we actually have an an element called as once i'll just remove this the document object you know that is where the document name comes from in doc uh, in dom okay at the very top level we have a node we have an object called the document or which will which will see uh, in just a minute okay so document object is there and document object contains everything else basically okay very simple the way dom works is when a browser loads the web page part of the loading process involves taking the incoming html and css okay <clears throat> which means you take the html you take the css and you create a whole bunch of javascript objects based on the elements and the styles okay basically what i'm trying to say is when the browser comes across a page like this it converts this thing into a into a tree like structure like this and it creates all relationships okay and basically while creating the tree structure every single element here is basically an object okay like this is an object this is an object this is not everything is an object basically and and what we ultimately do within our uh, within our javascript file is we target every single element which is we target the h1 element by targeting i mean we get the object okay we take the object we change certain properties and that's it like uh, things will change on the web page like for example let's say that i'll convert this into a span i'll add one button and i'll say ki change change span text okay this is our page right now what will happen is uh, the browser will convert this page right here into a dom tree first of all so how will convert this is within body we have two things we have a span we also have one we also have an uh, one button here okay. so the first thing the browser will do is it will take a look at this page it it converts this thing into a dom structure like this okay it converts it in dom uh, <clears throat> to look at this now actually we can simply go to our inspect element within this if you look at uh, this thing see elements mein jo hai this is actually a dom only like this is a doc type we have html here we have head and we have body body ke andar we have these two elements and head ke andar we have these this one element okay this right here is the dom tree structure now one second ha huh. so 
once the browser looks at this page, it converts this into a DOM structure like this, which means basically there is an object associated with every single node here. Like there is a head ka object, there is a title ka object, there is a body ka object, there's a span object, there's a button object as well. Now what happens is when I click on the button, using JavaScript, what I'll do is I'll take the span ka object. So there is a span object. It might look something like, I mean, it'll have multiple properties, but there's one property called the style property. This style again contains, let's say, a background color, a color property. Okay. So currently, the span uh, <clears throat> span ka object it contains many properties, but one of the property, the style property, just color of black. Now, when I click on this button, using JavaScript, I'll grab this object of span. I'll come inside the style property. I'll change the color to red. Once I do that, when I click on this element, this color will change to red, basically. Madhuri, yeah, you can think of it like that. So basically, like the document object, it contains a lot of uh, methods that we can use. Okay. Why does this exist? See, I'll tell you one thing. So actually, let's go to our. Uh, I will go to our console right now. Okay. Here, if I just type the word as document, see. When I expand this thing, this is a document, uh, like the document depression. But if you want to see this document in the object format, now you should do console dot dir of document. So this will actually give us a document object. See, this document object is a top level object which contains a lot of properties. Actually, see, one of them is a URL. What is the URL of my current uh, website right here? And uh, huh. if you look at this all ka property, you know, this all property, it contains of all the elements that are currently there on a page right now. Like I have a HTML element, I have a head element, I have a title, body, span, button, and script also. Okay, so document is basically an object, the top level object, which contains multiple things, including these important properties like URL we have, we have all, if you look at um, how we have this thing called as a child notes. If what are the direct children of the document uh, object? You can see that the child notes come at the There are two properties within child notes, the doc type HTML and HTML tag. Okay. Like these are the direct children of the document object. And then you have multiple things here. And if you see, you even have something called as the body. So document dot body itself is a body element. Okay. So is document ka body element consa hai? This one. Okay. So basically, document is this top level object which contains multiple properties that you can use. Apart from that, it also, it actually contains a lot of. Uh, where is that thing? It's not here, I guess, but yes, it also contains a lot of other uh, methods also, which we can use, which I don't, which I can't find for some reason. Hold on. But they're not here. Huh. Okay. But anyway, <clears throat> okay. The important point here is uh, you have a top level document object which contains multiple properties. And what we'll ultimately do within a JavaScript is, if you want to change the span, we get the span element, we change the properties of the span element. Okay. So one of the first things we'll start doing right now is, um, okay, within this only, let's create a simple uh, HTML file first of all. Let's add these both. Let's add one H1 element also as a heading. I'll add a break here. One more break. 
we have these elements right now okay <clears throat> one of the first things we'll do right now is we'll we'll first of all just try to access um i mean first we'll do right now is within script.js we'll try to select the elements okay see so guys you know that every page it has a dom structure and for every uh, for every element you create in html there will be a related uh, related job uh, javascript object like for example right now there are javascript objects for each of these things theek hai like there is a javascript object for body there is one for span there is one for break there is one for button h1 html every single thing okay kehne ka matlab ye hai ki every single element on this page right now there is a corresponding javascript object but why is it an object it's an object because like i said again so when you click on this button the click on this button right now we want to change let's say the text of the h1 element theek hai like h1 is an element basically will have multiple properties but one of the properties is this thing called inner text okay this inner text property represents what is the text of the h1 element okay in this case it's heading so let's say ki when i click on the button i want to change the inner text of the h1 so what i can do is when i click on the button i can get inside the h1 ka object i can change this property ka value to something else and once i change this the actual uh, the actual inner text of the h1 element will be changed which means abhi heading hai na once we change the value here it will automatically reflect here like this like that is what uh, we will ultimately do like that is the reason why uh, the objects exist for every single element theek hai like there is one object for button one object for h1 one for span and so on and so forth make sense guys i mean is the uh, is the overview clear hmm i'll just repeat one last thing and uh, i just submit this is there kya okay but i have not started started dom i'm not sure why you guys already have this Anyway, see, I'll just give a revision of this and we'll stop the class now because I have to uh, leave. And like I said, guys, like next week, say on every Friday, like only on Fridays from next week, we'll have the class earlier, and I'll take the complete two hours then. Okay, I'll probably try to have the class at around uh, uh, <clears throat> maybe six thirty-seven so that I'll finish off the class by nine or something. Okay. Ah, so just to revise. whenever we have a html page like this the browser will look at the page and it'll create one node for every single element like this and it connects them together in order to make them a tree structure okay a browser will look at the entire code it'll create like a single node for every single thing so it'll create one node for this one node for html one node for head one node for title and so on and so forth after creating the nodes okay depending on the parent child relationship it'll create a connection like this it'll say ki okay uh, we have the html element which has two children which are head and body as you can see here see if i collapse this thing see we have one html element which has two children here head and body then within body we have span and button like this we have other things also within head we have title here we have the title here. so the browser creates a dom structure like this a tree structure like this and uh, for every single element within the page it creates a corresponding javascript object like it creates an object for document it creates one for html it creates one for head and so on and so forth the reason why we create uh, The reason why the browser creates an object for every single thing is because it becomes easier to change anything of that element. Like let's say that you want to change the border of the element. 
if you want to change the text of the element, if you want to change the color of the text of the element, then you can simply do like a uh, body ka body will have an object like this. It has a color property. It has a background color property. It has an inner text property, let's say. Okay. So once you get the body ka object using DOM, we can change the color to whatever we want. And once you change the color or background color or in the text, okay, once you change any one of these things, the changes will be reflected on the page directly. So basically using JavaScript, we are changing the properties of the elements. And then once you change the property of the elements, the changes will be visible on the page. That's what we'll finally do. Okay. And one of the first things which we should do is to select the element now. Okay. Like for example, if, if you want to select the span element, I have to select so selection case Okay, that will in the next class. Next topic will be this. Okay. Okay, guys. So any questions before I stop the class? Okay, guys, I'll see you on Monday then. Have a great weekend. Uh, but also, thoda, thoda revise karlo. Okay? I'll see you on Monday. Take care, guys. Bye bye.